This is chapter 8.5, polar form of complex numbers. So we've talked about complex numbers when we were in the section of quadratics, and we said that complex numbers basically look kind of like this. So z is equal to 3 plus 2i. So they kind of have the form of a plus bi. And what we're going to do with, with uh, these complex numbers is that uh, we're going to um, try to come up with a way to kind of break them up into their something called their trigonometric form or their polar form. So um, you may have seen this in trig already, so this might be review for you. Um, and if it isn't, then I'm just going to go ahead and just um, do it again. Uh, so one of the things to kind of uh, know about the polar, uh, I'm sorry, the complex numbers is that you can actually write in the complex plane. So this is not the x and y axis. Now this is going to be the complex plane. And then uh, the way that the complex plane works is that the x axis is basically the real part of z. And then the y-axis is going to be the imaginary part of z. So basically, when you think of the real part, it's kind of like a regular x-axis, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then on the negative side, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 4. Um, and on the imaginary axis, you're going to have i, 2i, 3i. So these are going to have with uh, the letter i. And then you're also going to have negative i, negative 2i, negative 3i, so on and so forth. Okay. So one of the things that we can do is we can plot uh, complex numbers. And the way that we do them is not that bad. All you have to really look at is the real part is going to be the a. Okay. So that's going to be three units. So it's going to be three units on the real part. And then the imaginary part is going to be the, the B part, which is going to be 2. So you're going to go up to units 2i. So it's basically still like plotting a point. So this will be the point 3 plus 2i, okay, in the complex plane. Okay, so you can do this many different ways in the negative sides. We all know kind of how to plot points. Um, something else to just uh, remember is also that we were also talking about conjugates. Sometimes we write conjugates uh, or complex conjugates with a, a little bar on the top. Uh, so this is kind of to denote a conjugate. And if I asked you for what is a complex conjugate of 3 plus 2i, then it would be 3 minus 2i. That's what we call the complex conjugate. Okay, just a little FYI. Um, so uh, a couple of things that we can do with complex numbers is try to find the absolute value of it. So I'm going to call absolute value right here. And I'm going to call this, um, this has a... An, uh, a name, a fancy name, which is called the modulus. Okay, so the modulus of a complex number is just basically finding the absolute value of it. Um, so the way that we kind of do that is imagine that we're just taking the length of this particular um, from the origin all the way to the complex number. So I want to know how far it is from that origin. So we kind of already know how to do that because we've talked about polar num polar uh, polar equations already. So the, the way that we denote the modulus or the absolute value is just basically with an absolute value sign and inside of it we're going to have a z. And we already know what this is. It's going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is basically the same formula that we have for the radius of a polar, um, of a polar graph. So uh, it's just going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. So let's say we want to find the modulus. I find the absolute value. And I want to find the modulus of our friend z is equal to 3 plus 2i. Okay, so remember that a is going to be the real part and then b is going to be the imaginary part. So the modulus of this is going to be equal to the square root of a. So a in this case is going to be this 3 squared plus the square root, I'm sorry, the square of b. Now be very careful, it's just going to be the 2, not the i, okay, because we're only looking at those numbers. So then you're going to have the square root of 9 plus 4, which gives me the square root of 25, which gives me 5. Oh no, wait, that's wrong. <laughs> this should be a 13, that uh, was very wrong. <laughs> this is the answer. Okay, so square root of 13. Okay, and obviously this is the exact answer. So if you ever wanted to figure out what the approximate answer is, you can just put that in your calculator and you'll get that uh, this particular distance or the modulus is about 3.6. This is the approximate.
Okay, so that's how basically you do it. Now, the whole point of this chapter is not to really, I mean, here's a couple operations that we do, but we want to do some of the more uh, difficult operations. So, for example, uh, we saw that when we want to um, multiply uh, two different complex numbers, we need to FOIL it. So if I wanted to do 2 minus i and then 10 minus 2i, then we would have to FOIL all this out together. Um, and then similarly, if I wanted to divide two complex numbers, then that can also be a little tedious because you have to multiply by the complex conjugate. So this can be uh, a little long. So a little long. So what, the goal here is what we want to do is multiply um, and divide complex numbers in an easy way. So we kind of want to do that, okay? And the way that we're going to uh, multiply and divide uh, complex numbers is basically writing it in polar form, okay? So if I were to think about the complex plane uh, and we were to look at some value of z that equals a plus bi, Okay, so we know that for the distance from here to here is just this modulus, which is the absolute value of z. I'm going to call that r. Uh, in this direction, you can see that I'm going bi units, so it's just b. And in this direction, I'm going a units. This forms a 90 degree angle. This is basically just um, the formula for all of the uh, different types of uh, polar graphs. So this is just equal to a is equal to r cosine theta, b is equal to r sine theta. Okay, so that's basically all it is, and obviously you have the tangent of theta is equal to um, b over a. Now, of course, uh, we can just use uh, x and y if you want to. So if you wanted to write the complex number as x plus bi, you can do so as well. So uh, the formulas are still exactly the same. The only thing is now I'm just changing the, the um, I'm just changing the variables. So if you feel more comfortable just writing x and y, then you can just do that as well. So um, so basically, what is the polar form of a complex number? Polar form of a complex. Well, we know that the polar, polar, I'm sorry, the complex can be written as a plus bi. Well, a in this case is going to be equal to r cosine theta. b in this case is going to be equal to r sine theta. And then you have a letter i in there. Okay. So then when we do this, um, here we can factor out an R. And what I have in the inside is cosine of theta plus I. Let me write the I in the front, sine theta. So this is basically the polar form of a complex number. So I can rewrite this A plus BI in terms of R cosine theta R and then do R and sine and, and theta. Um, some shorthand notation though. So sometimes we do not want to write uh, r cosine theta, r sine theta. So the way that we write it is r c i s of theta. Okay, that's another way that we can write it. So here the c stands for cosine, i stands for the, uh, the imaginary number, and then s stands for sine. And then you obviously have the r, okay, which is the modulus. Okay, so let's do an example. Okay, so here's my example. So let's say we want to uh, find the polar form. Okay, so here the polar form is going to be z is equal to 1 plus i. So um, in order to find the polar form, basically what we need to figure out is two different things. We need to figure out what r is, and we also need to figure out what theta is. Because what we want it, we want z to be equal to r cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. That's how we want to have it. So we need to figure out what r and theta is. So we're first going to start with r. So r is going to be equal to the square root of a squared plus b squared. Notice here a is going to be this 1, and then b is going to be the number in front of the i, which is going to be also a 1. So you can see that this is going to be the square root of 2. And now what we need to figure out is where exactly is going to be uh, the theta value. So that's where we're going to use tangent of theta equals uh, b over a. So you have tangent of theta is going to be equal to 1 over 1, which is equal to 1. When I take tangent inverse of 1, you're going to see that this is equal to pi over 4. 
or 45 degrees. So usually a problem will tell you what kind of angles it wants. So if it wants degrees, use 45. If it doesn't, then you can use pi over 4. Okay, it really depends. Right now, uh, let's go ahead and just use a radian measure. Um, so basically, what is going to be the polar form? So the polar form is going to be z is equal to square root of 2 cosine of pi over 4 plus i sine of pi over 4. Okay, and this will be my solution. Uh, you can always write it as square root of 2, and instead of writing the whole thing, just write cis pi over 4. This is also equivalent. Okay, so uh, sometimes on web assignment on your homework, it might want to like this, or it might want to like this. So it really just depends. Uh, one more subtle thing to just kind of re know is that um, whenever you find the tangent of theta, remember that this is only going to give it to you in the interval from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So you need to always check where exactly this guy is at. So when you graph it, you know that it's 1 and then i. So clearly, this is going to be in the first quadrant, okay? You can see that here. This angle is going to be in this first quadrant. So it makes sense for it to be pi over 4, okay? So let's do another problem. So let's say we want to do the same thing, but for z is equal to negative 1 minus i. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we need to figure out our value of r. So r is going to be equal to the square root of negative 1 squared plus negative 1 squared, which is still going to be square root of 2. Then tangent of theta is going to be equal to y over x, or a over b, doesn't really matter. So that's going to be equal to negative 1 over negative 1, which is going to give me 1. So notice here that when I take inverse tangent and you put it in your calculator, you're going to end up getting pi over 4, or 45 degrees. Notice that that is not correct because if you look at this polar, at this complex number, you see that negative 1 is here and here's negative i. This is the angle that I want. So I want this entire angle. Okay. Right now, what I have is this angle. Okay. Oops. It's not writing. Right now, what I have is this particular angle right here. But that's not what I want. I want this entire angle. So what do I have to do? Well, what I have to do is just add 180 degrees. So I'm going to add, or pi, radians. So I'm going to take pi over 4, um, and then I'm going to add it to pi, and what I'm going to get is 5 pi over 4. Okay, so, so that's going to be the theta value. So our complex number is going to be z is equal to r, which is square root of 2, cosine of 5 pi over 4, plus i sine of 5 pi over 4. So the way that we can write it is square root of 2, cis, 5 pi over 4. Okay. Uh, one thing to also consider when we're doing problems like this, um, sometimes you're going to get a complex number like this one. Three, um, let's just write 3 plus 2i for the sake of it. Uh, where it's not going to be in the unit circle. So let's just ignore r for now. Let's see if we can find theta. So tangent of theta is going to be equal to uh, b over a, which in this case is going to be this 2 over 3. So you can see here that when I take inverse tangent, this guy is not on the unit circle. So this is going to be what you're going to, what, what the answer is going to be. Um, if you wanted it in um, uh, the actual approximation, then you will, uh, that was good, <laughs> actual approximation, uh, then you, what you would have to do is uh, I put it in the calculator. So you would have to have inverse tangent of 2 over 3, and that's going to give you about 0.58 radians, or 0.589 radians. Um, so uh, you can still write it as polar form. So you can, let me just write it as cis form. So whatever r is going to be, and then cis of 0.58 radians. So you can write it like this as well. So just don't feel comfortable with everything being in the unit circle, you might have problems where they're not in the unit circle. If you want the exact answer, it'll look like that. And if you want the approximation, it's going to look like that. And again, it really depends if they want radians or degrees. The problem will usually just tell you.